everybody, and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're excited today to have uh, Melissa Melnichuk on with us. And Melissa is a going concern. This woman has uh, developed a tremendous uh, resume and archive of experience. Um, she's a working mom, and um, she's also carving out a career for herself in uh, sports marketing because she's the uh, VP of business development with uh, a professional basketball team. Um, look at this. If you can see, is the Kitchener-Waterloo Titans. Uh, mm. And Melissa's been... Uh, been with the team and is building a community, a, a community centric uh, franchise, uh, along with the other management people with the team, and it's really been incredible to watch her um, do this because it, it's a it's a steep climb um, in in a larger city to to do this, and she's doing a great job. So how about that for an introduction? That's pretty pretty windy, but appropriate, I think. Uh, welcome, Melissa. Well, thank you. And I don't know who I have to pay for that amazing introduction, but it might start with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the check, is, the bill's in the mail. Okay. So okay. We're, we're good there. Invoice so Melissa, me. the the whole thing about getting into sports marketing, how have you found that? I mean, it, it's kind of a special field, isn't it? Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had, we'll talk about this as we go on, but um I've had multiple different careers and been in different industries. And this for sure, hands down, has been my favorite for many reasons. But I mean, I love sports and I love the impact that you can make for the greater community and the greater good through sports. Oh, excellent. Now, you have a background in sports at mm -hmm. university. You went to Wilfrid Laurier University. Yeah. Uh, you were the trainer for the women's varsity team, were you not? Yeah. So I yeah, did. So how did you get into that? So uh, one day I was working, I was actually in a tech job and I was really getting into fitness myself. And I'd always followed and done my CanFit certifications. I was a personal trainer um, on the side and uh, I really got into the love for sports conditioning and, and my passion kind of resided more in how do you get athletes more able, uh, have more of ability to prevent injury and to train um, to make them better on and off the court or in any sport that they are. And so I did a lot of studying on that um, and eventually met with Stu Julius, who at the time was the the coach for the Wilfrid Laurier women's basketball team. And he brought me on board and I worked with them and trained with them then for the next two seasons. Wow. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. And now let's go back. Let's, let's go back to the, the Titans. Yeah. Um, who are these Titan people? Who, what kind of league are you in and uh, how do you play? Yeah, so the KW Titans is a professional basketball team under the National Basketball League of Canada, so the MBLC. Uh, we have divisions or, um, yeah, so we have conferences here within Ontario. So we have the Central Conference, which is, we have teams in Sudbury, Kitchener-Waterloo, Windsor, and London. And then we have an Eastern division as well, and there, uh, there's four teams out there as well. Wow. And did it get started out east? Is that where the league uh, kicked off? Do you know? I, uh, I can't remember exactly where it kicked off. Um, I feel that they started with around 10 teams. Hmm. And so we're in season nine now. So still a fairly young franchise and a very mm -hmm. fairly young league. Um, but I've seen a lot of leagues come and go. And this one really has put their, their feet down in the ground and done an amazing job for Canadian basketball and Canadian yeah. professional basketball at that. There you go. Um the games are wonderful. It's, it's a lot of run and shoot. Uh, the three-point plays or the three-point shots are, are uh, incredible to see that these guys are hitting. You know, 30 feet is nothing for, <laughs> for these guys to, to hit from. And that the scores are always in the hundreds. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like 110 to 108 or 115 to 112. It, it's really entertaining, isn't it? it? It is great entertainment and it's high quality basketball. These athletes are coming from overseas. They're coming and coming internationally. A lot of them are from D1 schools in the States. Um, so we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of talent on our team. Um, and it's interesting when I'm in the games, obviously it's exciting to watch, but it's also cool when they're on the road and I, I listen to the commentators speak about the games and, uh -huh. and and that's exactly it it's it's exciting basketball to watch <laughs> so who is it that the uh, titans are attracting to the games you know i feel that we have a whole variety of demos that we like to invite out so you've got the kids and i think 
for the kids, it's that inspiring, um, motivational experience for them, right? So that they're there, they're seeing that high flying and high energy basketball. Yeah. They're they're seeing professional athletes that are you know, towering over them. Um, and, and many of them follow it and know their full career right down to being at the tight with the Titans. Um, but then we look, we have different areas as well. So we have the, the, the moms and dads that use it as a family outing. We have the grandparents that like to come with their grandchildren to, to bring them out for a night out of, of sports. Uh, but then we have the businesses as well. And, and I find that that's a really unique, uh, a unique area that we're really trying to expand on as well. But this opportunity for, from an economic development standpoint, to be working with the businesses within our community as an opportunity to use it for employee appreciation, employee retention, customer appreciation, maybe database collection by using tickets, um, or, or just in general, being able to take out people to attend a game. Excellent. And the the games itself, I mean, you, it, it really is about the experience, isn't it? Mm. What, what do you try to create uh, once people get there? You, you know, when I came on board, the two biggest things that I wanted to do uh, was have an impact on game day experience and an impact in our community. Mm. And shortly after joining the team, I had all these kind of wild, crazy ideas of how I wanted this game day to look. And, I, and you know, I brought on board an amazing game day coordinator and she's she's got a, a wicked resume in basketball and also has a very creative mindset. And, um, and and we've just really been able to align. And even within the franchise, Coach has an amazing uh, you know mindset because he's traveled and, and played overseas as well. Our DJ gives us amazing yes. feedback and ideas. So we have a really cool dynamic team that has that same vision everyone has the same vision of an amazing game day yeah. um so that you know we all focus in on making sure that that's an, an ultimate experience um and then aligning that with the community impact is also important and, and everyone's aligned in that way as well uh, now you've got a guy on your team that's uh seven foot 300 pounds um you dress is kind of funny what's the what's the fellow's name again we, we talking about Ty- titus here Titus, yeah that's it <laughs> isn't he amazing he is I think amazing. you have a I think you have a great relationship with him. <laughs> well, we're bros. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a, that is one of the greatest sports uh, mascots I think I've seen. Um, he He's really awesome. isn't he awesome? If you haven't seen Titus yet, uh, please go to the KW Titans uh, website and and check out the mascot. It's it's great. Then you've got some other crazy guy the racing around. The blue man. The blue man. And we're going to have a contest to name him eventually. We oh, just really? kind of wanted people to, to to get used to him and get accustomed <laughs> to his wild antics. But he was yeah. a big addition for us this season as well. Yeah. And, I, I don't and, think anyone's going to get used to blue, that guy. Yeah, I don't know if getting used to is the word maybe. It's uh, yeah. – no, they love him though. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's just it. Is So when I had first came on board, um, I was going to say this a few, a few minutes ago, is that – I actually got given this amazing article because I, I told somebody this was my vision, was this amazing game day experience. And they had said, they, I said, I'm going to mail you an article. First of all, I didn't even know people mailed anymore. <laughs> but they mailed me a magazine clip out. Again, I didn't even know people use magazines either. Red magazines, <laughs> physical magazines. I received it in the mail and it was about the Savannah Bananas. And this was the men's professional bas- uh, baseball team. Okay. And basically the team had gone um, – to the craps. They, am I allowed to swear on this? I don't know. Yes. Oh. Okay. Right I don't know if I had to monitor myself here, but they basically <laughs> went to the shits and the owner and his wife lost their house. They went bankrupt. They were sleeping oh, no. on the floor mattresses. And one day he woke up and said, I'm going to make it so that it's all about game day experience. And I don't care what that's going to look like or take. And he's, he said, and this is something that I now apply to everything. I want to know that from the minute that person decides to go to the game and they leave their house and lock their door until the minute they get back home and they unlock their door, that experience was amazing and extraordinary. And they remember it and they speak about it to other people. Now it's one of the, the largest revenue grossing um, professional baseball teams in that division or that league. Um, and he, he walks around in a yellow suit. He, and he, he had like, there's like banana beers that they drink at the game. And he walks around in a yellow suit with a top hat. They have a high five banana running around and they're, you know, the, the players give out roses during the game. Like it's just about an experience. Right. And ultimately, especially in a community-based team, it is even more about the experience and getting our community to love and buy into our team and the culture and the environment and the experience than anything else. All right. Well, you've done an amazing job in the community. Can you share with us a few of the activities you've uh, initiated? 
Yeah. So we, we do something that I call the Titans impact. And, and basically when I work with anybody, I really, I want them to know that there's more to just basketball than this team. And not that I'm, the basketball is not amazing because we both know and, and feel mm-hmm. that it is. But if you're going to have a professional basketball in your community, I feel that we need to be making a massive community impact within seven games of our, of this season this year, we've already impacted 14 charities or organizations that giving back to our community, whether it be, we aligned with you and, and, and the anti-bullying campaign that we ran with you. Um, I think one of my favorites that we're working with right now is food for kids. Mm. And, and so one other thing that we have is we've created a beautiful fundraising program through the Titans, similar to a girl, like girl guides program that okay. we get, we give you tickets for thir- $13, just throwing numbers out here and you can sell them anywhere up to full game day price. And uh-huh. you would keep the difference for your organization. And we will celebrate that on court. We do a check cut to whatever organization you're, you're donating to. Mm-hmm. But one that we worked with is nutrition for kids and or food for kids. Sorry. And they've uncovered that. There's 2,500 children in our community that go home hungry on the weekends. And the Titans are actually going in. And, and what they do is they pack food for children and put them in their backpacks on Fridays so that they, them and their sisters and brothers have food to eat. At this point, we're only able to feed 500 in our community. Yeah. And so when I heard this as a mom, especially as a single mom, especially as a single mom who's had to step into the food bank doors before myself for my children, mm-hmm. there was an immediate pull for me to be involved with this and our, and our, our players as well, who some of them have come from rough upbringings and, and had rough experiences in their own lives and they can really connect to this or want to help our community be better, especially right. for our kids. So this organization pre-purchased and has been selling like Girl Guide Cookies these tickets, over 300 tickets, and have been able to feed an additional two to three children in our community just from attending a game and selling game tickets. Wow. So that, that one's a big, amazing. Yeah. yeah, that was a big heartstring pull for me. Yeah, good show. So before getting into the sports marketing and with the KW Titans, um, you had a background in technology, as you uh, referred to before. Mm-hmm. I think you were with uh, Rim Blackberry, is that you, correct? Yeah, Rim Blackberry, depending on when you were there. <laughs> Which yes. one do you call it? Yeah. <laughs> I was there uh, during Rim days. So mm. I, was, I was in the OG days. Okay. And I... Uh, Actually, it was after, I saw, but I was part of the layoffs. So I was part of the second round of the layoffs. I was on a really cool team there, uh, the NARC team, which sounds awesome. Really? I was on the NARC team, <laughs> which which expanded out to North American regional carriers. Uh, but basically, it was strat- you were doing strategy and development for these high-risk carriers that you're working with the small guys. And now, 10 years ago, there wasn't the, Kodo, the kudos and the waves and all those small guys. It was uh-huh. the big three, and it was the same in the States. It was Sprint, Verizon, Wireless. However, I worked with small and upcoming regional carriers to basically battle against the Apple and the, uh-huh. big, and the big brands out there outside of them um, to give them opportunity within their regions um, to create growth, which ironically really ties to what I'm doing right now as well. Well, there you go. So what things did, did you learn from that experience that you can translate now into the Titan sports marketing? I think because I was working with regional, so small, you know, uh-huh. small carriers, yep. I'm working in a community-based basketball team. So not working at, you know, the level of the Raptors uh, where they, they, pull in, they pull in fans just because of who they are. Right. There's, it's, it's, so you're now creating, you have to create a story. You have to create a reason. You have to create some, some, some FOMO, like some fear of missing out. Um, <laughs> you have to work all of that into the reason why people come to Titans games. It's the mm. exact same when we were working with, with, with Rim and BlackBerry. You had to create a reason to want to stay with the BlackBerry and not leave right. for the iPhone. You had to create FOMO. Like if I'm an entrepreneur or if I'm a business person or if I'm even a mom, what am I missing out on by not having the BlackBerry in my life to make it easier and better? Mm-hmm. For me? Right. So I really felt that I learned so much around strategy and, and development of a brand um, and putting a brand into people's hands mm-hmm. for, the, for the betterment of them uh, through, through being at RIM. Yeah. Excellent. Now, <clears throat> you've also been involved in, a, um, in an area called it, – well, it's connected to, to yoga – and it's called Joga. Joga. So what the hell is Joga? <laughs> okay, good. You're bringing the swear words in now. I love it. Um, so Joga is, is yoga for, for athletes. Okay. And basically you're blending the, the beauty and the breath work that comes into, from yoga okay. into working with the biomechanics of the body in sport. Mm-hmm. 
And, and, and you're looking at tying all of our postures are related to sport and we're not putting them into long static holds. Mm. We're doing movements that again are really applicable to their sport and we're trying to increase their mobility and their stability. So whereas yoga looks really at that flexibility, I'm not looking for my athletes to be loosey goosey because if you stand back and look at it, that doesn't make sense. You don't want to be over, over flexible as an athlete. You want your, 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 you want to be mobile. You uh-huh. want to have great mobility. You need stability. And so we teach that and we work within your joints. We work within your um, kinetic energy. We work within your nervous system. We work within breath work and using breath work to help you recover. Um, uh-huh. So it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful practice. And where does this come from? Where did it originate from? So the founder, her name is Jana Webb. And Jana actually had uh, been in a, in a horrific accident. Um, and it, but originally she had been trapped. She was an athlete and she struggled with the same things. Like she, she wasn't flexible. She was, you know, having some injuries. She went overseas and actually had studied um, in different areas, different forms of, of yoga uh-huh. and took some of those forms, came back here and after her accident created yoga. And it had gotten the buy-in from professional leagues when she started practicing on individual athletes. Wow. And so now it is um, one of the, it, it's used within the NBA, the NHL, the NFL. Um, she's everywhere with it. And I actually just was uh, down in Las Vegas this summer with the NBA Summer League and working with some of the teams there and doing yoga with them. Is that something you may want to expand on in the in the future? Is become the queen of ju- uh, <laughs> jugo? Yoga. <laughs> Oh God. I, I don't know about being the queen of it, but I love it. Um, it it's really complements what I already do. So I, I uh-huh. actually, I actually do yoga with the Titans and with my team. Right. Um, I do it with the local universities here in town. Um, it keeps me in touch with my athletic side, but also with athletes. It keeps me, uh, you know, in line with the athletes as well, and keeps me in tune with them and connected to them, which I find really pays off in my my job within business development because I really uh-huh. understand the athletes as well. Right. When I'm creating content around them, I have a, I have a relationship and a friendship with these athletes and a connection right. with them outside of being, you know, on the business side of the books. Uh, and so I'm able to create, I feel it helps me to create content to have that relationship with them. Sure. Um, so, so it's kind of an aside to, to all the, the many things that I dabble in. <laughs> um, I have commitment issues basically is, is really what's, <laughs> it's really, it's, not about being the queen of anything. I just have commitment issues. So I do a lot of things to keep me happy. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about, about another one of those things. And that is um, you have a, a pretty extensive background now in uh, in podcasting. Tell us a little bit about the the podcast that you helped develop and, uh, and how successful that's been. So um, I, I've done a couple. So I did one for myself and that was called Shift Your Shit. And, and <laughs> <laughs> because change sucks, so yeah. shift. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Another one of my little ventures is that I um, am, I do life coaching and I do, uh, I guess you would call it life coaching, but I also do coaching in general and health and nutrition. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist as well. And um, I, I guide individuals into better healthy lifestyles, all encompassing lifestyles, which isn't easy. And I struggle with myself. Sure. And um, so shift your shit was just kind of exposing what we're expected from societal norms and what we're being told we should be doing or we're being told is, is, you know, how we should feel or believe or what we're being sold in regards Uh to diet, nutrition, health, all of that stuff. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to shift us out of that. And, and, and also internally just shifting your own shit, like the shit you tell yourself, the lies you tell ourselves and that we ultimately believe. And, and I'm constantly working through it. And so I wanted to, you know, start a podcast where I would interview other individuals who I think have done a good job, a badass job of it, or, <laughs> you know, or haven't, I want to share how they failed at it. And then now, right. now they're, you know, they're doing better because of that failure. Yeah. Um, and, and the way that they're looking and they've created new opportunities from those things. So, sure. um, and then Kate and I, uh, a good friend of mine have done some podcasting around single motherhood, single motherhood. Yeah, that's wow. my com- that's my commitment issues coming in again. <laughs> I thought you were going to tie that into when I said well, I had commitment issues. Actually, I was waiting. Ago. I was there was a little sure bit of are. yeah yeah a, sure a, a creative pause there. So let's talk about being a single mom, mm-hmm. and you have three children. Mm-hmm. Um, the oldest is ten. Yes, down to four, I think. He's three. He just three. Came three. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've got this incredible responsible job with the uh, Titans. You're doing mm-hmm. a great job there. And then you've got 
some other stuff happen. And then you've got your children and you want to be the best mom possible. I do. How's, how's that working out? What's, what's going on? Uh, you know, I think the answer would be different based on if you ask my 10 year old and my three year old. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like my three year old thinks I'm amazing. Yesterday he was like, you so funny, mommy. Like, he thinks I'm amazing. <laughs> yeah. I can't do wrong in his eyes. Uh, whereas my 10 year old, he's faced a lot of struggles in this entire yeah. process. Um, and I carry a lot of guilt and I carry a lot of pain and I carry a lot of frustration. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so does my 10 year old. And so I, I don't know, I don't have that answer. I don't know if I'm ever doing a good job, but do we know if we're doing a good job or we have an answer for anything along right, those right. lines in life? True so, enough. Yeah. so what, what's this about the guilt? Um, is this, is this kind of some lies that you're telling yourself and, <laughs> you know, seriously? You know, I think especially being a single mom, um, I guess that was the next transition of my life as I became a single mom. I was an entrepreneur. I had my own business, um, but I couldn't, I wasn't, it wasn't stable enough for me Uh and I didn't feel secure in that. And so I, you know, that was part of the reason why I transitioned into a a career, a different career path. Uh Um, You know, I'm very faith-based and I believe that God put the Titans in front of me at the right time when it needed to happen. Uh I was, you know, I was dabbling in some other things. And and like I said, I was doing some stuff with, with Kate and some of that stuff all had to be put on hold for my next phase in life. Uh And, and that my kids had to become a priority and all of that. Uh But, but along with them coming a priority, when you start a new career and you, you take on the, the role that I took on, uh, my kids are getting pushed to the side a lot. So mm. they don't get to see mom like they used to. I had a stay at home job before, you know, I had my own career and I managed my time and I, and I managed around them. And now, you know, they get home cause they are in after school and they get home at five or six and we mm. eat dinner and they go to bed mm. and they don't get mom. They we used to. So I feel a lot of guilt around that and, okay. and, and, and they're verbal about it. They're very verbal <laughs> about it. You don't play games with us. You don't do this. You know, I mean, the only benefit I think they have is that they get to go to these basketball games all the time, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. So what advice then? I mean, it is impossible to be, I mean, here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm male. I'm stale. Um, I'm pale. <laughs> Come on. You're not stale. I, but I, I don't know how single women with children and a career make it happen. What advice can you share with other folks that are tuning in that face a similar type of situation? I think this applies to anything, and I say this to my clients as well. Um, sometimes it's okay to float and not swim. Mm. I think that we're always trying to swim forward and move forward at when we just don't have the energy for it. Mm-hmm. And at some times in our lives, we need to put on a life jacket and just lay back and float and don't get any better. Don't do any self-improvement. Don't, you know, don't commit to any new things. Don't, it's not about that. It's about just surviving and Mm -hmm. being okay in the moment of where you are and accepting that and being kind to yourself Mm -hmm. and being gentle and, and loving yourself a little bit harder and giving yourself some extra, extra big hugs. And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's a little, a little bit of a soft approach and, it, and, mm-hmm. and it, but the, 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 the biggest thing is that I say, it's okay. If you float, you don't need to sink. You can just float. Right. Oh, I love that. That's, that's probably good for anybody to realize that, um, you know, the, this whole type a personality, uh, track that some people get on may not be a healthy track Yeah. and it's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are times when you do need, to just say, I'm okay. Yeah. Until I'm better, I'm going to take some time to float. Yeah. So those those are those those are wise wise words. So where is Melissa going to go next? What are you thinking about? I know you've got your career with the Titans, and you know you're you're still involved in a lot of things. You've only got so much energy. You've only got so much passion. What are you going to focus on? No, man, I have an endless bucket of passion. <laughs> yes, that, you do. That's not going nowhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I've learned in this whole process uh, through multiple careers, through a change in life, through the divorce, uh, through being a single mom of three, is that tomorrow's never promised. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are foolish if we try to plan our, our future. 
Mm. I think that we definitely can play a part in it and we can try and direct it and we can, you know, do vision boards and speaking affirmations and, and, Mm -hmm. and working towards a certain future. But I think there is such a beauty in the unknown. Mm-hmm. And I and I like to live in that space. I I, okay. I definitely don't want to be uncomfortable, <laughs> where sure. you know the unknown. Because I've also, like I said, I've said I felt that unknown during hard times of, you know, financial or, or or whatever that looks like. I'm not. That's not what I'm talking about. But there's a beauty in allowing you to grow in each stage of your life without knowing or trying to plan for the next jump or the next puddle. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about this this thing that you're working on with Kate when you have time. Who is this Kate person? We're talking Who is this about? Kate? Kate yeah. is a very good friend of mine. Um, and both of us met um, a, a couple years ago at an entrepreneur event. And I think Kate tells the story much better than I because I one of the things I do admit is that I have a very bad memory. And during the process of my separation and divorce, I would say one of my coping mechanisms is to for, is to forget or n- sure. not kind of acknowledge even things. And so that's a natural. Mm-hmm. So I don't have a, a great recollection of the whole process, but we had met, we became instant friends because our, our 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 bond was the fact that we were both going through a separation at that time, and both of us kind of aligned in supporting each other through that, and also then uh, Kate started, so then Kate started working for me and my my previous company at that time. And uh, we had some shifts and, and moves and jigs, and and Kate really started speaking about her separation and being a single mom. And I and I, and and at that point, I had not because I had not seen it anywhere. And I and I was in the influencer space for my my previous career when I was in in television with Rogers, mm-hmm. and and no one was talking about divorce or separation. I was like, there's no possible way on Instagram that no other women are going through this, but no one was talking about it. So I yeah. thought you know, from a branding perspective, and I came from branding, well, yeah. then no one, that's not a brand I want to align myself with. So I didn't talk about, and I also feared it would affect my brand and, and my, my business partners and I brand at that time. I uh-huh. didn't know how to process it. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. Uh-huh. Um, I had been hiding a lot of my life at that point um, to keep it picture perfect. Uh-huh. And Kate was just this like powerhouse and was like so open and so vulnerable to me and to other people. And, and, Ultimately, we then connected on on that as well, and and started podcasting and and started working in this space of single motherhood. What's the name of that podcast? So the the site and the membership that mm-hmm. Kate runs on and runs and and I give her all the kudos to. I just kind of stepped in there for in and in and out before I went to the Titans. Um, is called Single Motherhood, and it's an online forum where single mothers can safely be. They can even be under an anonymous alias. Um, and speak about what they're going through, ask for advice, ask for help, or just follow along to see that mm-hmm. they're not alone. Right. Seeing and that you're not alone is so see, important. So important. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, even what that goes down to, to every single person, right down to my 10 mm-hmm. year old, I bring him to programs or I've had friends bring him into group programs where he, he's not ready maybe to talk about things, which I, mm-hmm. I find that I can, I, I can understand that. Um, cause I wasn't ready at my own point and, and but he's ready to hear that he's not alone. Right. And, 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 and that's so important for all of us. I think constantly exactly. it's interesting. Like we're more connected, but we are more disconnected than we have ever been. It's ironic, isn't it? And it's it painful. Is. It's yeah. painful. I just, we don't, we don't have these close relationships. We have like close fingertips. Like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's something we're going to have to get past. I don't know how, but yeah. uh, it's changing culture. It's changing society, maybe in ways that uh, aren't going to be, good or sustainable for happiness. Right? No. And I yeah. think that you're seeing that. I think you're seeing some younger generations, uh, youth not jumping into the Facebook or the Instagram the way mm. that some of us did. And, and you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're boycotting it almost and doing things like TikTok where it's just dancing or being silly or being funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're seeing that. I definitely think that there was a big uh, gap or space and time that people became obsessed with social media and we may Uh be moving away from that a little bit, but it is, but it is here to stay. You know, Uh I just think that maybe we won't use it always the same way. Yeah. So let's, let's jump back to, uh, let's jump back to the Titans then and, and, and and do our, do our wrap up and which is, um, what are you most proud of, um, so far in the season and what do you still want to accomplish in the next seven home games uh, mm. coming up. What, let's talk about the next games. What, what, do you, what is it that you want to do? I, uh, I want to get more bums in seats. I want okay. more people to experience uh, this game and, and also just the Titans in general. But, but there's a selfish 
want for that. And that uh-huh. is because my, my underlining agenda here is the Titans impact. And without those bums in seats and without, you know, the support of our businesses and our community, um, we can't make that impact. And, and right. like I said already, affecting over 14 charities uh, each game, we ask our fans to bring different donations. We partnered with Nissan Kitchener here in town, and mm-hmm. they bring out their their truck, and pe- and our, our fans stuff the truck or fill the Titan. It's because it's a Titan, Nissan right. Titan. Um, you know, they brought socks and gloves and backpacks and coats, and we're, and we've got uh, gently used sporting goods coming up, and and food bank items and toiletries. All these things we've been asking, and and our fans step up and bring it. Yeah, uh, and then and then the financial donations from our community. We have multiple different companies that have come on as sponsors, but then, you know, they'll give an actual donation back to a different organization. So we had a a mental health game where where Mm -hmm. we, you know, we stepped against the stigma of not being able to talk about mental health and mental health has a big place in sports specifically for athletes. Mm -hmm. And, and like, you know, another one of our sponsors stepped up and donated to our Waterloo region suicide prevention council. Mm -hmm. So that kind of stuff, that's what I want to do, right? Like that's, yeah. that's, that's my underlining selfish agenda to make this community <laughs> amazing. And, you know, if I was going to leave my own job, it was going to, I was going to do good. I was going to mm-hmm. make sure if I was going to leave my children and not have my own, my own entrepreneurial endeavors, I was going to do good for this community for the sake of my children. Yeah. And so my selfish thing is, is the Titans impact, but ultimately I need bums and seats. Yeah. Um, so that's my goal. You know, right yeah. now we're really working, working on, creating these games that impact organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're working on reaching out to businesses and, and we've offered corporate flex packs now where, where businesses can get flex packs of tickets of 10 to 20, but there's no commitment to a specific game or the quantity of tickets you use like a season ticket. They can use them to hand them out to employees or to clients or just have them on hand for events or team building. Right. Um, but getting that support and getting those people to the games. And we, and the coach, he always says when he goes to speak that I just ask you to come to one game yeah. because I, I promise you, you'll be back. And <laughs> what I like to say to the people that do come to the games is bring a friend and make a fan. Mm-hmm. Help us, help us make those fans. Yeah. We, the Titans have a great coach and, and he was a player with the Titans and now mm-hmm. he's, he's coaching. And I think he's, He's very inspirational, not, of course, just for the team, but he comes from a background that he, he shares his own uh, journey and, and, and some of the lessons that he's learned. I think that's very important. Yeah, and our community has just gravitated to him um, <laughs> it, it tenfold. They love him. He's, he's you know, a big advocate for me- mental health. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brian Lurkin said it best once. He said he's just a good human. It, it, there's an aura about our coach. He carries um, with him. He does. So. Yeah, it, and it's it's spectacular. And yep. uh, you know, Brian Larkin, he's easily influenced. <laughs> I... <laughs> if you don't go know Brian Larkin, he's the police chief, and he's he's also an amazing human. He is an amazing um, human, and he's a and he's a huge Titan fan. I see him there uh, all the games, all the home yeah. games. Brian yeah. is is there. The one so. thing you get with the Titans in general, and and that's a culture that Coach has really done an amazing job at cultivating, is it's a family. Mm-hmm. And, and our Titans play as a family. Our team plays as a family. Um, our fans feel like they're a part of the mm-hmm. family. And we notice when we don't, you know, when we're, our family is going through a rough time is when we're not as strong. And, mm-hmm. and that is our strength. Our strength is the fact that they are family and people know that the Titans don't give up. Right. And, and again, it's just a beautiful culture that has been cultivated within the team and the organization. Love it. So, Melissa, it has Mm. been fabulous speaking with you. This conversation is going to go in our Hall of Fame. Well, thank you. Well, there you go. Apparently, you're you're easily you're easily. uh, (laughs) Well, you know, Brian Larkin's rubbed off on me. Yeah. (laughs) So everybody, say uh, hello and goodbye to uh, Melissa Melnichuk from the KW Titans and all sorts of other career um, background and um, subscribe to the uh, website and uh, check out the Titans. So bye, 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 bye for now. Thank you again, Alan. I appreciate it. All right. See you later. Take care. Bye. Bye. AQ's Blog and Grill.